Hi, it's Ed with just under two weeks till election day. Let's take a look at the movement in targeted Senate races and for hints on the direction in our key House races. President Trump's approval rating is as strong as it's been since his post-election honeymoon period, such as it was. However, he still remains, as we say, underwater. Meaning that even at his most popular, more Americans disapprove of his job than approve. The gap in his approval rating is around seven points, and if you joined us last week, you may recall that president's approval ratings around 44% historically have lost around 30 seats in their midterm elections. That gets Trump a Democrat speaker come January. And as we've said, a close election could mean Nancy Pelosi might have trouble getting the requisite votes to become speaker, and we could have a whole nother circus on our hands. We also talked about generic ballot polling question where voters are asked if they would prefer a generic Republican versus a generic Democrat for Congress. Democrats have an advantage in this question of around eight points as of this recording. Again, if history repeats itself, they should win the majority. According to the Cook Political Report, Democrats had staggering success in the third quarter fundraising period, which will allow them to continue to fill the airwaves with those compelling ads so many of us never tire of the ones where they pledge to fight for us. All that cash should boost their chances in the critical toss-up seats, most of which are being defended by vulnerable Republicans. Remember, Republicans are playing defense pretty much everywhere. According to the Cook Report, Democrats outraised Republicans in 112 races for Republican-held seats between July and September. This prompted Cook to say, Democrats have now the clear advantage in 17 Republican-held House seats. They said that even if the toss-up states break evenly, Democrats still score a net gain of 29 seats, clearly giving them the House majority. Cook also says the most likely outcome is a Democrat gain of 25 to 35 seats, again, just enough to give them the House majority. And this jibes with what we've been seeing based on real clear politics data we've been watching and the historical trends. But Nate Silver at 538.com may have given Democrats the kiss of death by positing the chances of Democrats taking the House are now around 86%. Remember Silver's 72% chance that Hillary Clinton would win the presidential election. And my prediction that she'd get 303 electoral votes. As far as the Senate, things still look very close in five of the key races we're following, Montana, Nevada, Arizona, Indiana, and Missouri. They all can still go either way. Most surprising here is Kristen Sinema in Arizona, where we've seen a drip, drip, drip of secret videos of her publicly mocking her state and her constituents in out-of-state appearances. It's kind of amazing people aren't more put off by an elected official repeatedly calling her fellow citizens crazy. Well, who knows, maybe we've all realized that we all think everyone else is crazy and we're just sort of letting it slide with Kristen. What has moved? The Florida race seems to be slipping away from challenger and midnight oil frontman lookalike Rick Scott. His dream world is just about to fall. That's right, midnight oil lyrics. Our media consultants' data say obscure 80s rock references appeal disproportionately to electrical industry executives. It's algorithms. In North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp is done as she was two weeks ago. Marsha Blackburn continues to run strong in Tennessee, with the exception of one Vanderbilt poll that had Phil Predison up one point. But that's the only thing that's shown him even close lately. The next wild card, or more accurately, 7,000 wild cards, consists of a mass of humanity walking to the United States from Central America. That's far. Look, I text my wife from upstairs so I don't have to walk to the steps and yell down. These people have it so bad at home that they feel compelled to walk more than 1,000 miles on the off chance that they can somehow get into America, where it couldn't possibly be any worse. Maybe being used as a political wedge issue is a small price to pay if you can escape existential poverty for the American brand of poverty. It worked for my ancestors. After several generations, I've nearly shaken whatever guttural patois my Scots-Irish ancestors brought from the swamps of southern Missouri, and I'm comfortably ensconced here in the corporate square office park. As far as I can tell, immigration is as close as we've gotten to a public policy debate in this election. We haven't gotten very close to that. 
It's still all about Trump. Impeach Trump. Stand with Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. And some are predicting abnormally high voter turnout in this midterm election because of Trump. So what does that tell us about our politics? It's personal. We may claim to care a little bit about issues, but nothing motivates us to get out and vote like spite, apparently. So if it takes spite to get you to vote, use that. But first, take a look at your sample ballot. Get up to speed on all the races in your area and on your ballot initiatives. Here in Missouri, we have no fewer than three ballot initiatives relating to pot legalization. And there's one to raise the minimum wage to $12 an hour. As consequential as our Senate race is, I can't think of anything more consequential than that minimum wage hike. 18 states have already done minimum wage hikes above what the federal government has through ballot initiatives or legislative action. Arkansas is also considering a hike via ballot initiative. The Democratic referenda on how much we all get paid is an interesting idea. One wonders why they stopped at 12. But if you're one of those suckers or business owners who has to deal with these sordid practical implications of artificially rising payroll costs in an era of creeping Jacobinism, you may be planning to attend the regional conference in Marco Island, and we hope you are. Please remember to vote early or vote absentee. Election day falls within the schedule of the conference. Make your voice heard at the ballot box before you make it heard at the NAED Regional. That's all for today. Join us next week for our final pre-election installment. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting NAED.